Over the past 50 years, the average global temperature has increased at the fastest rate in recorded history. And the experts see the trend is accelerating. All but one of the 16 hottest years in NASA's 134-year record have occurred since the year 2000. A new United Nations report warns the impacts of climate change are increasing and inevitable. More than 100 scientists from across the globe put together the findings, which is the most extensive look to date at the effects of climate change on the environment. And scientists have issued their starkest warning yet about the danger of climate change. In a dramatic report, the UN's Intergovernmental Panel says the world is nowhere near its target of keeping the rise in average global temperatures to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Instead, it says we're heading for an increase of 3 degrees from pre-industrial levels. Now to well, a dire warning about climate change. According to a new report, experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. It also says if unprecedented changes are not made and made soon, there will be irreversible damage to the planet. Well, the report focuses on what could face, happen John, if global cost. temperatures yeah. rise by more than 1.5 degrees degree Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. It would likely mean more erratic weather. Dangerous clock has been unveiled in Iceland to remember the first of its 400 glaciers to be lost to climate change. Okukul Glacier used to cover 15 square kilometres of mountainside. Now it is barely one square kilometre and less than 15 metres deep. Climate change deniers have argued that there has been a pause or a slowdown in the rising global temperatures. But several recent studies, including a 2015 paper published in the journal Science, have disproved this claim. But how did man-made climate change start? To understand how it all started, we need to travel back to the 1800s. When human society began to industrialize, we started to change the chemistry of the atmosphere by adding carbon dioxide, or is more commonly known, CO2, to the air. Carbon dioxide is a colorless gas with a density of about 60% higher than that of dry air. Carbon dioxide consists of a carbon atom covalently double bonded to two oxygen atoms. It occurs naturally in Earth's atmosphere as a trace gas Natural sources include volcanoes, hot springs, and geysers, and it is freed from carbonate rocks by dissolution in water and acids. If we look back at the pre-industrial levels, the ppm of the CO2 in the atmosphere was around 280. But with the increase of burning fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas, which have come the fundamentals of the Western society, in the last 200 years, the ppm has risen to a staggering 410. But does it really impact the world as we see it? Iceland enjoys a warmer climate than its northerly location would indicate because a part of the Gulf Stream flows around the southern and western coast of the country. Reykjavik has a cool temperature climate with mean annual temperatures similar to cities nearly 20 degrees of latitude further south like Toronto or New York. This is not to say that it never gets cold in Reykjavik because it does. In addition, the result of mixing the warm, moist Atlantic air with the cold, dry Arctic air produces a weather pattern that is wrought with instability. Reykjavik's climate is controlled by the battle between bitterly cold Arctic air masses from the Arctic and the influx of warm air and water provided by the North Atlantic current. The island of Iceland lies within the warm North Atlantic current which is the northern extension of the Gulf Stream current. Europe's largest glaciers are in Iceland, where they cover about 10% of the landmass. Iceland's southeast glaciers, or on the southern edge of the Vatnajökull ice cap, are located in the warmest and wettest area of Iceland, and therefore respond quickly to changes in temperature and precipitation. Since the start of the millennium, the southeast outlet glaciers of Vatniakuk ever treated rapidly. Their mass loss per unit area is among the highest in the world. One of the glaciers in this area, the Breidermarkokuk, 
has retreated more than 5 kilometers, losing 11.2% of its volume from the late 19th century to 2010. Some estimates say that up to 10 named bodies of ice have previously expired, along with countless more that were unnamed. But Akiakul was the biggest so far. Iceland proud itself on being a green country, and in many cases, it compares itself to the United States. Even though Iceland generates the most clean electricity per person on Earth, with almost 100% of its energy coming from renewable sources that make the most of its unique landscape. In the drive for dry land, Iceland lost some 90% of its wetlands, which is bad not only for climate, but also for birds, insects, and plant life. As most of this new dry land is not actively used by farmers today, it is possible to fill in the ditches and allow water to rise again. As of 2016, Iceland's CO2 emissions are 16.9 tons per capita. The biggest contributor for Iceland is uncultivated wetlands. In the 1920s, the Icelandic government started paying farmers to drain wetlands. They did this by digging ditches and channels that allowed the water to flow away without being absorbed and stored by peat and plants. The drier land is more valuable as farmland and also more pleasant to walk over in a nation that spent the last thousand years with cold, wet feet. Science points towards that we are the problem. But how do we fix it? To avoid the worst consequences of climate change, we'll need to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050 or sooner. Iceland has already started this process by filling in ditches. Where there's a will, there's a way. We can fix this.